fall conference last September, I highlighted the many initiatives and projects that we had taken on, and I asked everyone for patience as we navigated the university, both literally and figuratively. Those of you who attended fall conference received fidget spinners as a symbolic gesture, though I'm sure some of you actually used them and found them quite handy at times. I am happy and proud to say that collectively, we have made major progress on many fronts, and we have much to celebrate as we close in on the end of the academic year. A patch of vacant land south of the CLA is now clearly recognizable as our new administrative and student services building, which will open in early 2019. Further to the south, the new student residence halls are taking shape. We have made significant progress on the strategic plan, academic master plan, and campus master plan. We're on the path toward announcing our development partner for the Campus South project, and we are in the midst of re-accreditation. And we're putting the finishing touches on our semester conversion preparations. With all that said, our biggest accomplishment, individually, and as a university will take place soon when more than 6,600 new graduates receive their diplomas. I cannot adequately convey the great joy I feel when I look into the eyes of our new graduates and shake their hands on the commencement stage. Commencement marks the culmination of a student's journey of creativity, discovery, and innovation at Cal Poly Pomona but it also marks the start of a life's journey in which those attributes will continue leading to personal fulfillment and career success. One of the people who works behind the scenes to make sure that commencement is truly memorable is Imran Hamid, Media Vision's streaming video and systems engineer. Whether you're in the quad, and watching on the big screen, or viewing the event online, Imran makes the magic happen. By the way, did you know that our commencement ceremonies are viewed online in about 80 countries? Imran also plays a positive role in the lives of students who work in Media Vision, where he not only teaches them the technology, but is always there to listen and provide insights. For all that he does for the university, I am happy to introduce him in this edition of Bronco Bravo. Hi, my name is Imran Hamid, and I work at Media Vision as a system analyst and streaming engineer. What I like about my job is not the same every day. I direct live events that happen on the campus, provide all the engineering, make sure all the technology is working from the camera all the way to when it reaches our clients. Imran is really awesome when he's actually like in his element. You know, he's surrounded by the technology, he's directing, he's leading, he's just making sure that everything runs smoothly. I've known Imran a long time. I'm always impressed with his uh, grasp of technology. To not just understand new technologies, but think of really great ways to implement them and to make that technology valuable to our department and valuable to the university. He sort of helps me get more confidence of technology. I can go to him for advice about anything. He's really become like a mentor to me. He's definitely one of those guys that's willing to go that extra mile to help out a person. He's really about personal connections. I can tell he cares about me, and I can tell he cares about the office, and he cares about Cal Poly, and that really comes through. Our commencement ceremonies has grown a lot over the years. It's a paradigm example of where Amron shines. And over the years, we have improved so much. Starting in 2001, it was one camera shoot for commencement as an experiment, and now we're up to like 10, 11 cameras now. We get tens of thousands of views from about 80 different countries. Having those family members being part of their kids' graduation without actually physically being here, that's priceless. Nobody can. I can never replace that. And you know, a lot of that has to do with Emron. Emron has been a, a key component in making our commencement a success. I'm proud of what we have become from where we started and where we are now. And I can only imagine where we'll be in the next 10 to 15 years when I'm ready to leave this campus. As we complete this academic year, 
I want to share a few stories that illustrate who we are as a motivated, transformational, and caring university. When Bryce Kimley came from Cameroon to the United States as a young man 20 years ago, he spoke only French. He was supposed to meet up with an uncle, but because of a miscommunication, he found himself living on the streets in the Inland Empire. But he would not be deterred. He found a job as an overnight maintenance worker at McDonald's and enrolled in community college, juggling two full-time responsibilities and squeezing in a little sleep when he had the chance. He told the Los Angeles Sentinel, I remember changing my work clothes in the car and in the bathroom sometimes, but I learned dedication and organization. He enrolled at Cal Poly Pomona as an engineering major and earned his bachelor's degree in 2006. Along the way, he moved up the chain at McDonald's from cook to lower management and then supervisor. Today, Bryce Kimley oversees six McDonald's restaurants in Orange County and is responsible for a $15 million budget. He is married, has five children with a six on the way, and owns two houses, and he is planning to pursue a doctorate degree. Bryce's story of social mobility is inspiring. And though his engineering degree has not applied directly to his career success, his total education experience at Cal Poly Pomona helped prepare him for his life's journey. As many of you are aware, my husband is a Marine Corps veteran. That's one of the reasons I occasionally stop by the Veterans Resource Center. I value the opportunity to talk to students there and to hear how we as a university are serving their needs and I am always warmly received. We recently marked another Memorial Day, which is a time to remember those who have died in the service of our country. I also see it as an opportunity to acknowledge those who have served or are currently serving. One way we honor their sacrifice is when we honor our commitment to our veterans and their success. Therefore, it is fitting that this Difference Makers segment features our Veterans Resource Center. The Veterans Resource Center is a hub of a lot of different services and opportunities for veterans, all who have a common bond of being a part of the larger military community. The Veterans Resource Center does bring together a lot of services, but there's more to what happens at the VRC than dealing with veteran students as though they have needs. It is a program that creates impact. We're always very supportive of one another, whether it be with academics or things going on in our personal lives, we act as a support channel. Having an advocate on campus can help give them a sense of connection to the campus that allows them to focus on the subject material. I've actually have seen other students come in not knowing where they're going to be later in life, end up having these amazing careers. Those are the kind of stories that the, you know, the Veterans Resource Center creates. Some students choose not to disclose or would like to kind of create their own identity outside of the military or being a veteran. But there's still a reason to stop by, whether it be to encourage another student or to discover new opportunities that they didn't know were available. You know, you could make a friend, you could actually find out about resources that you don't know about, so just come visit us. <laughs> Provost Sylvia Alva, Academic Senate Chair Julie Shin, and I had the honor of recognizing another group of difference makers. These are the faculty who've made long-term significant contributions to the university, their academic discipline, and our students. With these faculty having decided to retire, the Academic Senate voted to bestow upon them the honor and designation of emeritus faculty. 
Before I conclude this message, I want to acknowledge our leaders in ASI who have been steadfast in their commitment to fellow Broncos who experience food insecurity. The ASI Senate recently approved funding for a food pantry to be established in the Bronco Student Center this coming academic year. The budget provides for operating supplies and a staffing model that will allow the pantry to be open six days a week to accommodate students' busy schedules. The project was initiated last year under ASI President Uriah Sanders and culminated this year in a Senate bill that called for a food pantry to provide both perishable and non-perishable food items. Many details need to be worked out over the summer, but ASI is optimistic that the pantry will open in the fall semester. The pantry is just one of many campus initiatives to address students' basic needs. I am so proud to be part of a university community that looks out for each other's well-being. There are now less than 85 days before semester conversion. I am again reminded of the tremendous planning and work that has gone into this transition. Every division has been touched by this shift. And a major thrust now is assisting those students who did not graduate this year to move from the quarter to semester system. This has certainly been a very busy academic year. And there are countless examples where you have engaged with students, with each other, across departments and divisions, all toward a common purpose of achieving student success, advancing our institution, and maintaining teaching, scholarly, and creative excellence within a diverse and inclusive environment. For that, I simply say thank you.